Cross country racing is all about weight saving, or is it? Modern courses are getting gnarlier, which begs the question, what's faster, a lighter bike or a heavier, but more descent focused one? Before we find out, a big thank you to Freewheel and Madison Clothing for sponsoring this video. Right, let's get to it. Of course, in an ideal world, you'd have a lightweight bike that was also incredibly capable. And most modern cross-country bikes are indeed both of these things. My BMC two-stroke is ridiculously lightweight and climbs ferociously quickly, but it does feel a little sketchy on the descents. So can making it heavier actually make it faster? Will the added capability save time on the descents and make up for the added weight and thus the time lost that it costs me on the climbs? I'm going to ride this sub 8kg weight weeniest of builds from our last BMC video first and set a lap time. Then I'm going to take it to a downhill boot camp. I'll throw on some wider but still cross country appropriate rubber, a short travel dropper post and a stiffer ball with a smidge more travel to see how much difference it makes to my time. The changes will add around 800 grams or so of weight so even then this beefed up version will still be a very very light bike. To shake out the results I've got two courses to throw this bike up and down. I have a climb that involves some smooth single track, some switchbacks and a steep technical section littered with loose rocks and roots. To keep things fair on this section, I'll be trying to keep my average power output the same using a pair of Favero power meter pedals. Now, of course, it's still not 100% scientific, but it should allow us to make this as fair as possible. Next up is the descent, and again, I've tried to keep it as varied as possible to replicate a cross-country course as best I can. There's some flowing single track, some jumps, and some fairly tasty rock gardens to pick my way down. By splitting this test into two segments, I'll be better able to see where I'm losing or gaining time. I can then add the two times together from each bike, and I'll have an overall time to compare. I'll do both courses on the lightweight build as it is here, and get some times in the bank first. I'll then get the bike in the work stand, get tinkering and head back out to do the second laps on the beefed up machine. So time to hit the trail and find out. My legs are prepared for the pain, I think. We're going. Right, start off on this bumpy bit of single track, almost like fire road. And it's not long before we get straight into the techie stuff here. Really loosen technical here but we're strangling for grip scrambling even just those tires peeing around fork flexing it's making it difficult to stay on line over the bridge we go so that's the first time to ascent out of the way overall as expected the bike felt like an absolute rocket ship However, it was a little bit bouncy on the more technical rocky sections of the course. Those tyres don't offer much in the way of cushioning due to their small size, so I'll be interested to see how the bigger tyres affect that when we come back later on. Right, I think my legs are recovered, so time to hit the descent on this lightweight steed. Go! Dropping in to the descent on the lightweight build. You can already tell that as a man used to a dropper post, the fixed post is going to be interesting yeah it definitely can fill the satellite right up my backside the fork's flexing around a little bit as is the handlebar and stem which we're not going to be changing remember it is just the fork the tyres and the dropper post that we're going to be changing yeah it just don't feel like I can get the bike where I want it to be but still very fast and very fun. So that's the descent on the lightweight build completed and I have to say it wasn't quite as sketchy as I thought but don't get me wrong I still wasn't exactly in my comfort zone. Generally the bike felt okay although the tyres in particular did feel a little bit skittish and I'm still not sure of having the post way up high right underneath me and not being able to get it out of the way but we'll get the bike in the work stand and we'll see what difference the changes make. Time then for a quick rundown of the things that I've changed. First up is the dropper post, which I think is the one that's going to make the biggest difference overall. 
This is OneUp's V3 dropper post in 27.2 millimeter size and 90 millimeters of drop. It weighs 403 grams, including the remote and cable, making it 290 grams heavier than the Schmolker post I had fitted previously. That's quite a chunk of weight, but it should let me move around more easily on the bike and feel more secure and confident on the descents. I've also slapped on my favorite cross-country race tire, which is Maxxis's Recon Race in a 2.4 inch width. These weigh 825 grams each, making them 250 grams heavier per tire than the frighteningly light S-Works tires, but I think that the extra width and volume could make a difference over those skinnier fast tracks. Finally, I've added RockShox's latest SID Ultimate Fork up front. This has a little bit more travel, but importantly, I've got stiffer 35mm stanchions, so it should be more accurate and let me hold my lines a little better. It's also, and surprisingly, a smidge lighter than the SID SL Select Fork, which was on previously, weighing 1,529 grams versus 1,536. All in all, the bike now weighs 9.3 kilograms, which I still think is pretty bloody light. Back to the trails then for another round of leg torture. Let's do it. Right, setting off on the climb on the more capable bike. So it is around a kilo heavier than before, but I'm not really noticing that added weight yet. But definitely I'm noticing more grip from the tyres, that extra volume over these rocks. It's getting bounced around a lot less really. I feel like I can put the power down. A lot, lot better. Despite the longer travel fork, not seemingly affecting the handling too much either. So, yeah, feels good. Okay, here we go. Big steep climb. Woo! Heart rate's going up quite high there. But that did seem an awful lot easier. There we go. Ooh. And across the bridge. There we go. So that's another climb done and dusted. And quite frankly, I'm glad that's all over because my legs are killing me. But how did the heavier but more capable bike perform? Well, I have to say, I actually wouldn't be surprised if it was a smidge quicker. Did it feel a little bit more sluggish? Yes, but only ever so slightly. Where I noticed the biggest difference was in the technical sections. Those extra volume tires really helped in terms of grip and traction. I was getting bounced around nowhere near as much as I was on those much lower volume but lighter tires. It's genuinely really surprising how much of a difference it makes. But the big question is, is the heavier bike slower or faster on the climbs? We'll find out later because first it's time to hit the descent. So let's see just how much time I can make up over the lighter and less capable bike. Oh, straight away just having the dropper post and the satellite nice and out of the way is so much nicer. So I can actually attack the trail even though it is very greasy. I don't know like the tires have more grip. It's just that you don't get bounced around so much. Because there's still a pretty fast rolling intermediate tread. But you do just have a bit more comfort and cushion from that higher volume casing. Still just a lot more confidence inspiring than I was on the other bike. That's it, all of the testing is now done, but how did the bike feel on the descent now that I've made it more capable? Overall, it was massively, massively different. The fork is a lot stiffer. I just felt so much more in control of the front end of the bike compared to the lighter bike where it really felt like you were just having to really muscle it around to try and keep it online. And the dropper post helps in that regard as well. Slamming the saddle out the way, you can just move around the bike more freely. 
The tyres also helped massively. In the rougher sections, I was able to just carry more speed and I wasn't being bounced around so much. So everything just works better on a bike like this when it's just a bit more capable and you're not having to think about just staying on the bike and you can actually relax a little bit more while still going faster. But that's all just my impressions. Let's go and sit down, have a look at the times and see which is the overall winner. Now, before I get into the results, I want to start with the rather large BMC-shaped elephant in the room. You'll probably have noticed that I'm wearing a different jersey riding the more trail-capable bike than the lightweight one. And that is because, thanks to good old British weather, we had to film the bikes on separate days. It's just one of those things, but we have made every effort to make sure that the times are still going to be relevant. So trail conditions are as close as we were able to get them given the confines of the weather. And we think they're still very, very relevant for how this test was intended to be originally. So here are the all important times on the screen now. As you can see, the trail capable bike is clearly faster. It did lose out a little bit on the climbs, but it more than made up for that on the descents, despite the fact conditions were a little bit slippier. But where exactly were the differences made? Well, for me, the main thing on the trail capable bike was the addition of a dropper post. Having a dropper post means you can just relax a little bit more on the descents. And I did find that I was saving a little bit more energy compared to when I was riding with the rigid fixed post. And if you're saving that energy, it means you can then put that back into the climbs later on. The next biggest difference was definitely the tires. Now, the wider Maxxis Recon Race tires that I put on are a personal favorite of mine. They are very scantily treaded, but that massive 2.4 inch volume really, really helps in the rough and tumble of cross country racing. The bigger volume means you've got better punch protection. They roll over obstacles a lot easier thanks to the bigger volume. They're just a much better tire. And again, it's easy to see why 2.3, 2.4 inch wide tires are becoming the common size for cross country racing. They're just better than thinner, lighter tires. So there we have it then. The more trail capable bike was faster and is indicative of where the modern cross country race bike is. It's far more capable than ever before. It still climbs like an absolute rocket ship but they are just heavier. So weight winniism isn't the be all and end all if you wanna find the top step of the podium in your next cross country race. We really hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to see even more cross country tech, then check out this video.